right, I want to welcome everyone to the Nat U Hill uh, room. This is the County Council meeting for Tuesday, July 23rd at 5 p.m. here at the Monroe County Courthouse. I'd like to call tonight's meeting of the County Council to order. And I want to note for the record that here in the Nat U Hill, we have Councilors Munson, McKim, Iverson, and Deckard. And I believe we may have uh, an additional Councilor Hawk uh, coming in shortly. She was coming from another meeting. All right. With that, uh, I'll note also that Councilors Crossley and Wilts are not in attendance this evening. I'd ask all to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, counselors. Uh, item number three is our adoption of the agenda. Does anyone wish to amend tonight's agenda? I have one item to add. Uh, if I have unanimous consent, I'd like to add item 11E, a discussion and possible approval of an appropriation and or deappropriation of ARPA funds. And I believe uh, Angie will be speaking to this later in the evening. Is there any objection to adding item 11E as I've just described it to the agenda? No. No objection, so ordered. Any other changes to this agenda? Seeing none, let's go to a voice uh, roll call, a voice, voice vote mm -hmm. on the agenda as amended. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Let it show that it was unanimous. We'll now move on to item four on our agenda, public comment. And this is for items not on the agenda. There will be a time limit of three minutes per speaker. Do we have anyone wishing to make a public comment on items not on our agenda here in the Nat U Hill or on Teams. If you do, come forward up to this podium here in the Nat U Hill, again, for items not on the agenda. And for anyone else on Teams, just raise your hand and we'll get to you. Again, the public, we have a lot of public here today. Welcome all. Uh, the public is always welcome to make these comments here in the Nat U Hill or on Teams. Going to do one last call. Any co public comment? All right. Seeing none, we will move on in the agenda. And that takes us to item five, and that's department updates. And for departments wishing to make an update tonight, there will be a time limit of 10 minutes per department. And if there's any department head wishing to make that update, come forward here in the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams, and we will get to you. Want to know for the record, Councillor Hawk has joined us in the Nat U Hill. Any department heads? Everybody's squeamish tonight on coming forward. <laughs> Again, all department heads are always welcome in the Nat U Hill. I'm going to give this one more second. All right, seeing none, we'll move on. It takes us to item six council liaison updates. Are there any councillors looking to do an update this evening? I see Councillor Munson's got an update. This is uh, an update for the Sophia Travis Grants Committee, and I'm very happy to announce that next Tuesday, uh, there will be a workshop, and actually it is a, a working group for all applicants for Sophia Travis Grants this year. And we're going to hold this at 5 o'clock here in the Nat U Hill room. And any uh, not-for-profit is invited to come and learn about the program, ask questions, and um, get advice on how to make your applications for funding. Uh, the county council has a small fund for community services grants. And it's a very competitive process, but I want to tell you our not-for-profits in our community do wondrous things with the amount of money that we make avail available. 
So we invite everyone to come and learn about how to um, how to get the biggest bang for your buck and how to make applications. Five o'clock next Tuesday. All right, thank you, Councilor Munson. Thanks also to the members that serve on that with you and do that great work. Any other counselors wishing to offer a liaison update? I will just note for anyone in here there, I see plenty of chairs and there's a whole empty bench right here. Huh. Good heavens, I'm moving this meeting fast, but I don't know I'm gonna move it that fast. So make yourselves comfortable and please grab a chair and all are welcome. We're gonna move on then if there's no other liaison update to item seven, that's the consent agenda before us. Council, I move to approve the following consent agenda items. A, the June 20th, 2024 joint meeting of Monroe County Council and Board of Commissioners, June 25th, 2024 joint executive session of Monroe County Council and Board of Commissioners, and July 11th, 2024 joint meeting of the Monroe County Council and Board of Commissioners as presented. B, the auditor's request in fund 1000-0002, general fund auditor, the creation of account line 33010, refunds. And C, the highway's request in fund 8165-0000, Vernal Pike Connector Road, the creation of account line 37417, project consultants. Second. All right. We've got our consent agenda before us. Any questions on those items uh, from the council? I'm gonna also ask if the public has any questions or comments on the consent agenda items. They can raise their hand uh, and discuss any of those mentioned by Councilor Iverson. Doesn't look like it. Okay. If there is no comment from council or the public, let's go to a roll call vote, a uh, voice vote on the consent agenda item. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Looks like it carried unanimous by those present. Let's move on to item eight. This is a request from the plan commission. Council, I move to approve the planning department's request for an additional appropriation in fund 1000-0079 general fund planning in the amount of $26,230 in the services category. Second. All right. We've got with us online our director of planning, Jackie Jellen. Please. Hi. Good evening, council members. Thanks for having us. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen with the uh, request that's located in the packet, but also just for clarification. Um, we are coming to you tonight for a, a request for an additional appropriation. This is for our county development ordinance and the required statutory mailings that we have to send out uh, as it relates to the new zoning text, subdivision text, as well as the map amendment. So we've provided a quick narrative that I'll go over as well as some uh, two bids that are located in the packet. Um, we are requesting the upper limit of those two bids, which is the $26,230. But we're hoping to go with the uh, lowest price vendor that we believe will do uh, the best job. So we are required by state statute to send out a legal mailing to all county residents uh, that own property in the county jurisdiction. In addition, under the state statute, we are required to mail out mailings to those within an eighth mile of the town of Ellisville, an eighth of a mile into the city of Bloomington, and an eighth of a mile outside of the county jurisdiction limits. So this comes to about 42,561 pieces of mail, um, which is why we are asking for help from a third party vendor to get those out uh, in uh, due time. They believe that they just need a 10 day lead time and that will ensure that people get the information they need. Um, the mailing itself will notify people of the date of the hearing uh, as well as the location and time. 
um, as well as other statutory requirements such as what the uh, CDO, the County Development Ordinance, will be addressing, um, what it will be changing, and um, some other pertinent information that is required. So um, I'd be happy to take any questions that you have or comments at this point. All right, let's go to questions from Council. Councilor Iverson. Uh, thank you, Ms. Jellen, for being here uh, this evening. This is uh, pretty exciting to be able to send out this many postcards. And just for those who are uh, watching, uh, I have two questions for you. Number one, where are we in the process of the CDO? And number two, where can people find more information about where this big change uh, is, is taking place? Thank you, Council Member Iverson, for the great question. So, um, we are at the process, we are at the point where we have a full draft of the county development ordinance. And I do want to make an announcement that on August 6th, we will be hosting a plan commission administrative meeting uh, with, um, and you all will be invited to attend. I'm going to have the legal department go ahead and do a, a draft notice in case a quorum of the council. Uh, commissioners uh, will be present at our regularly scheduled plan commission meeting, but this is going to be a full release draft of the entire CDO. Um, and so your other question about where people can easily find a copy of this when it's available is the www.monroecdo.com website. We're going to put it at the very top and we will make sure that, um, you know, we're ready for those mailers to go out. Um, we are going to receive a high volume of phone calls and our planners are ready and have been uh, putting this on the calendar for quite some time to hold that date, those uh, several dates thereafter to uh, answer the public's questions in person, by phone, by email, et cetera. And that information will all be on the postcard as well. Great. Thank you so much. You heard it here. Mark your calendars, August 6th. Okay. Other questions or comments? I'm kind of old school. I like postcards going out. I'm sorry, but uh, I, I, I think it's a necessary function to reach all the folks that really need to know the vital information they need to know. Seeing no other comments on this, let's see if the public has some comments. If you have comments, either come forward here in the NATU Hill uh, to the podium and we'll recognize you or raise your hand on Teams. And I'll watch Teams here. And if it Somebody's is, got a hand up. Yeah, let's see. I don't see it. Jeff Morris? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like Jeff Morris is first. Huh. Hey, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. My name is Jeff Morris, and I'm the president of the Monroe County Plan Commission. I just wanted to take a minute to express my support for Jackie's funding request for the CDO mailer. As you know, Jackie and the planning staff have been working very hard to bring the CDO to completion, and this will be a major process improvement for the public as they work with the planning department. This has been a major multi-year project, as you know, that is almost complete. So I would just ask that you all consider voting yes to this request to help move this across the finish line. Thank you all for your time and consideration. Okay. Thank you very much. And just for the rec record, we got your sentiment and we were seeing the words at the bottom. Uh, TSD, if you've got any more volume in this room, we'd take it. If not, we might take it in the future. Uh, look, It looks like we've got Commissioner Thomas with her hand raised. Yes, I will be brief as a member of the Plan Commission since 2009. Um, this is something we've been working toward for a long time. And this, it's important to get this notice out. It's legally required notice. So uh, we really appreciate your consideration of this item. And thank you um, in advance for your support. And thank you, a huge thank you to the planning staff for all of their hard work that got us to this point. Thank you very much, Commissioner Thomas. All right, any other public comments? Raise your hand on Teams or come forward in the NAT, you hill. All right, seeing none, we will go to a roll call vote. Councilor Munson? Yes. 
Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. We look forward to hearing more. Item nine is a request from the Youth Services Bureau. Council, I move to approve the Youth Service Bureau's uh, request for the creation of a new position, development and training manager, and to simultaneously amend the 2024 salary ordinance in fund 1114-0166 lit special purpose, Youth Service Bureau, account line 11129, development and training manager, 40 hours, Pat C, exempt with an effective date of July 28th, 2024. Second. All right. And welcome. Do you want to tell us more about that? Hi, sure. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Vanessa Schmidt. I'm here from the Youth Services Bureau. Um, so just to kind of recap that, for the last few years, with the significant increase in expectation and requirement of our staff, uh, based off licensure, contracts, and grants, um, we've really been talking about the need to centralize those training and development responsibilities to one staff person. Um, so in May, we requested that position with PAC. That was then forwarded to WIS for a classification review. That came back to PAC um, with that classification and, class, and then PAC recommended that we go ahead and bring it to council. And so we're here tonight to request approval of that position and simultaneously to amend the 2024 um, salary. Thank you very much. Questions from council, Councilor Hawk. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much for being here this evening. Um, and one of the things that I had requested and then I found out after I sent the request that Councilman McKim had also sent out a similar request because our technical services department was just not prepared for the amount of new positions that we've been adding and it didn't work in their budget what they have budgeted for the supplies, computers, whatever. And so I've asked that in future that we have a fiscal analysis uh, for things like that you do when you have an additional new person, you have a desk, you have you know, sure. the phones, whatever. And then to determine what budget it should come from. Uh, and I believe uh, that Kim Shell was going to get some information for, yes. for us to see if we might perhaps be able to pay for some of those expenses out of your budget since the fund is totally separate from the county general fund. Sure. Is, is that pretty much as you remember it, uh, Council Member McCam? Yes. Yeah, and, and Michelle may have some thoughts. I know we talked briefly in the office earlier. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of emails going on today, but um, <laughs> I thought I sent you guys the information, but it appears that um, there is enough um, within the YSB's um, budget itself uh, for any kind of uh, computer equipment. But the uh, commissioners also have a, um, an account within the YSB if you'd want to add it to through the uh, commissioner's department to, for that. So it's whatever, you know, I ha don't have an amount yet. I'm still haven't heard back from Greg with regards to our, you know, what kind of a fiscal, you know, what kind of equipment we're looking at, that kind of thing. But, but you I, think there may be an existing appropriation that could be used? I, I think so. I think they, they've got a, a couple of, um, I thought they had some stuff. And just, just I, I want to point out, I had a conversation with Greg about a month ago, I want to say, where he brought up this issue. And I believe the estimate he had provided at that time to me was roughly about $2,000 a new employee in technology. I may be low on that, but I know that it's at least that. And we definitely need to start accounting for that in the flow some, somewhere, that, because there is so much technology associated with each position. Other questions or comments while we're waiting uh, for more information? Councilor Iverson. I just want to make sure that the public knows that as, as Council Member Hawk mentioned, we are doing a lot with departments these days and I'm so thankful that council staff has added 
the organizational chart. And you can find that for this department on page 85 of today's packet. It's a great way to kind of wrap your head around what's happening with these departments uh, visually. And any new changes are in a kind of a pink color. So keep your eye on that. Thank you. Kim, you've got an update? Yes, a according to the YSB's um, special lit purpose uh, fund, they have a computer equipment slash other account line um, in the capital. Um, at currently, they appropriated $10,000 and they've only expended $30 out of it at this point. So, I mean, they do have that. Um, they also have um, some where it says, maybe like they have a software line too. So if we need the software to. will be spent one okay. lump sum for an annual amount, but the computer for the computer technology is available. Okay. So okay. yeah, I, I have no concern that we would be able to cover that so, two thousand of yeah. start costs. So that's costs. the two lines that I had um, noticed, and you know, so Voices we can work with that. Sure. Awesome. Other council comments and or questions on the item. I appreciate Greg bringing yeah, that up. I appreciate what you're doing and PAC's deliberation on this. Let's see if the uh, public's got any comments on this item. If you do, come forward here in the NATU Hill to the podium, and we'll hear your public comments. If you're on Teams and what, wish to comment, simply raise your hand, and we'll get to you. Seeing none, we will go ahead to a roll call vote. Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. All right, that takes us to item B. Thank you, Council. You've got one more. One more. One more. Council, I move to approve the YSB's request to amend the office manager job description. The amendments did not require a classification change. That's good. Second. Got a motion and a second. Would you like to add any comments to this? No. <laughs> Sums it up in here. <laughs> All right. Councilors, do you have any questions or comments? Again, I appreciate PAC's deliberation and the clarity on this. Helps us do this quickly through our agenda. All right, let's see if the public's got any comments. Raise your hand or come forward. Raise your hand on Teams or come forward in the Nat U Hill. All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and go to a roll call vote. Uh, this is changes to a job description only. You can do it by voice vote. All right, let's do it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously with those present. Let's move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Let's move on to item number 10. Request from the Board of Commissioners. Council, I move to approve the Board of Commissioners request in Fund 1000-0068 General Fund Commissioners for the creation of a new position, Account Line 11018, Conservation Resource Specialist, 35 hours, Pat B, non-exempt, with an effective date of January 1st, 2025. Second. Thank you. Martha Miller, welcome back. I'll let the you take it. And I've got Miss Purdy on here, but I think she's turned it over to you. <laughs> Hi, Council. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, about five years ago, we began to see a pretty in large increase in requests for technical assistance for landowners out in the county. We use state resources as best we can, but they have one person for 12 counties. Um, so we looked for a grant um, to see if we could justify this position. And three years ago, we came to council and expressed that we had received a grant from the state Clean Water Indiana Fund, and that we had hoped that by the end of three years, we would be able to um, justify the need for this to be a permanent county position. And that's where we're at. Um, we definitely have the data to back that up, so. Thank you very much. Questions or comments from council on this? This has been some considerable work on this one. It's back, forth, here, and back and forth. 
Councilor Iverson. This did indeed come before PAC, and you can see WIS's recommendation on page 87 of today's packet, which uh, I read in my motion. So I, I'm really excited about this position. Uh, I think as a lot of people may or may not know, uh, Monroe County does not have an environmental position. We don't have anybody working on anything dealing with uh, climate change or the environment. And so this, in my mind, is a very positive step toward that direction. I'm really excited about what this position can do, uh, particularly as I think both of you have been involved in the work that the Environmental Resilience Institute has been doing with Monroe County. So it's gonna be exciting to, to see all this move forward. So I, I'm very supportive of, of this move. Thank you. Councillor Hawk. Uh, yes, I think you folks uh, know from the comments I've made in the past that I will not be supporting this position uh, simply because we've seen so much growth in the requests for spending more and more of local property tax dollars and income tax dollars. And I think we have to look very carefully every time we add a new position uh, for the additional cost of, of the, whatever is tied to that. Uh, but uh, I, you clearly have the vote, so I wish you well. I just wanted to explain to the public why my vote will be a no vote for today. Thank you very much. Councillor Munson. I want to say that I'm very pleased to see this finally brought to the council for a vote. I will be supporting this. Uh, and this is because the position is helping people throughout Monroe County, including people who live in the city of Bloomington. We have, we have many questions, many needs, and we need the resources that you will bring. Thank you. Your comments or questions. I, I just to close um, on my comments would add that I think I have done two passes as liaison to your department and each time we were working on this effort during that time and I can like go back through a, a pages of time and remember working on this and then to see it happen, it goes to show that perseverance working through the work gets it done. Okay, any other comments from council? Let's go to public comments. If you've got them, raise your hand on Teams or come forward to the Nat U Hill. Seeing none, we'll go ahead to a roll call vote. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Hawk? No. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Motion passes four to one. Okay. That takes us to item B. Council, I move to approve the Board of Commissioners' request and fund 1000-0068 General Fund Commissioners to amend the job description for account line 11016, Soil and Water District Manager, 35 hours from a PAT B to a PAT C, non-exempt with an effective date of January 1st, 2025. Second. All right, Ms. Miller. Well, it just, this was not originally something we had anticipated, but due to the process, um, the Soil and Water District Board felt it very important that the position I hold be the supervisor of the day-to-day -day activities of this position um, that's being created um, for a multitude of reasons. And so therefore we had to go through the process and um, I would like to state that I had actually said that I would be okay if we just left it where it was at, as long as we could get the position through. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate all again the work to get to this this product questions or comments from council Councilor Iverson I just would like to posit that the PAC process is not too onerous we got this through pretty quickly <laughs> yeah. gotten better yeah sure has. I don't think no. any other comments or questions let's see if the public's got comments if you do come forward in the Nat U Hill room or raise your hand on teams Seeing none, let's go ahead to a roll call vote. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. yes. Councillor Hawk? No. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed four, or passed by majority four to one. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming in. Good to see you both. We thank appreciate it. Thank you all it. for the effort. 
we will not let you down. <laughs> we know that. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It takes us to item 11, uh, American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, uh, request from emergency management. Council, I move to approve the emergency management's request for an additional appropriation in fund 8950-0000 American Rescue Plan Act fund in the amount of $240,000 in the services category. Second. All right, we've got with us Jamie Nibel, our emergency management director. Good to have you with us. Tell us what we need to know here. Sure. So uh, June 25th storms uh, came in and really packed a wallop on our county as well as Vigo, Clay, and Owen. Um, so we had a local disaster declared. And in the aftermath, we had a ton of debris to clean up. So we began with a $50,000 contract with a local contractor to clean up that debris. We exceeded that $50,000 rather quickly, uh, went through another contract for $50,000 rather quickly. And uh, so here we are, we've spent about $120,000 $120,240 and moved 8,016 yards of debris so far. Can you just say that number one more time? Which one? The yards. 8,016. Okay, thank you. And we uh, began tackling this by township with the most debris to least. So we began in Perry Township and we are about a third or halfway through Perry Township. Mm. Demand is substantial. Wow. Yeah. So um, I have spoke with the contractor. He gave me an estimate that we have another 9,600 yards to go. I think that is very conservative, just from the driving around with the SBA and doing surveys, ground surveys, and things like that. Um, but his estimate is another 144,000. Just from the citizens that I've spoke to, I know that a lot of them are waiting to move that debris to the roadside. So I think there's still some debris that's unaccounted for in that estimate. All right, let's go to questions from council. Councilor McKim. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a couple of quick ones. So first of all, this is only, we're only, uh, picking up debris outside of city limits? Correct. Okay, so outside the city of, of Bloomington City of Bloomington with... and Town of and Ellettsville well. are excluded. Okay, and they're both doing their own. Yes. I know City of Bloomington is. Is Ellettsville also doing their own yes. debris cleanup? Okay, and then, um, and so what is the reimbursement situation or the potential reimbursement situation? Mm -hmm. The potential reimbursement situation is if we qualify for PEMA, FEMA public assistance funds, that is a 75% reimbursement rate. If we qualify for state funds, that's more like a 35%. That uh, number can fluctuate. So 35 is a conservative percentage. Okay. And then that would be uh, rebated back into the ARPA funds. Is that, uh, maybe, maybe that's not a question for you, but yeah. it's a question for Bree. It would return to wherever the funds originated. So paid out of ARPA, it'd be returned to ARPA. Okay, great. And so the you're asking for two hundred forty thousand dollars right now. Correct. And do you think that would get you to the end, or are you? I will return at a later date with a similar ask, just to finish up, to ensure that we can finish up fully. Yeah, and we want to do that, right? Ms. Purdy's here as well from the commissioner's office. Yeah, hi there. Um, I just wanted to kind of. Um, add to this that that Jamie is coming back um, in August um, for a request from County General um, for this purpose and and the idea actually is, is that we would if council wanted to do that we could actually reimburse the ARPA funds the 240 so that that still remains as an available for other ARPA projects um, and hopefully um, the hopefully this amount will get us through and, and get this taken care of. We have to have a, an end to this or else, or else it will just keep going forever. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe we have a last week posted um, and presuming that we don't run through this money um, faster than 
your next council meeting in August, um, we should hopefully will be done. We have since stopped taking forms and requests. So we did put an end to that because I mean, eventually it does have to have an end. We can't take requests forever. Yeah, and they have actually on their website and on our website, it's um, the townships by um, date. So people can anticipate when people will be come, when they'll be coming through their particular township. And so I want them to stay on those dates. So because if you miss it, you've missed it. I'm sorry, you know. We're going to try really hard to stay on those dates. Okay. Councilor Hawk. Yes, of course, there's been so much discussion about this and information going out. Uh, and this might have been a direction from the city and not the county. But I remember at one time there was a notation, don't fill out the form and et cetera until you have it ready to be picked up. Or what, And there were a lot of people who were waiting until closer to the time when their township was going to be picked up before they moved the debris to the roadside. So I think that the, we still have a lot to learn. I hope we never have this problem again, but I, I don't think we've heard the end of this. Wow. And further, I think it makes it just common sense to me, but then what do I know about trees down every place except this one down in my yard? Um, if they have so far picked up 8,016 Tons, is it tons of yards. debris? Yards. Or yards of debris. And they think they only have another 5,600 to go and they haven't even finished Perry. Uh, that doesn't sound right to me somehow. I hope they're right. But I think uh, if thousand. they're not right, we cannot just say to the public, well, we just kind of believed it would be better than it was. I think once we've told the public we're going to do it, we've got, we have an obligation to be fair to every township, not just the one that got taken care of first. Uh, and that's my theory on it. Um, but I just wanted to make it clear that I think this is a danger to leave the debris along the roadside. My daughter and I went out into the country just to see, you know, down Starnes Road, down Howard Road, uh, in a lot of the different neighborhoods, there is debris down all through this county. And, and that becomes dangerous. It's a fire hazard. And it also is a situation where we're going to have a lot of stormwater runoff problems because our drainage isn't going to be working correctly. So I think we do have to get at it. And even if we have to work with more than one provider, whatever we have to do to get it moving forward quickly, because as you said, we have to put an end date at this sometime. But that's hard to explain to the people in Richland who are still sitting there with all the debris. So I'm just hoping that we'll work together to make sure the dollars are there. And I'm hoping that we will pay as much of it as we can out of ARPA, because remember, ARPA is a separate fund that we use just for the, that are not, not in the city and not in the town of Ellisville. And we're saying the city has to take care of theirs, town of Ellisville has to take care of theirs. And so that seems an appropriate fund to cover as much of this as we can, because that's a separate fund just for those folks we're covering. Um, but at any rate, I certainly do appreciate how hard you all work to try to get something done that you've never had to do before. Um, it's a testament to hanging in there and ma making sure the public knows they're heard. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Iverson. So uh, we're, we, we have a, a platform here and a podium uh, and we're hearing a lot about dates and, and people need to be aware. M multiple members of the media are watching right now. Where can people find the most up-to-date information about what they need to do to make sure they don't miss uh, out on opportunities? Absolutely. So we've been putting out 
press releases regularly, and we're tying in all of the local media, the radio stations, we're putting it on our Facebook page, we're putting it on our website as well. So any of those places that you're used to seeing all of the things is where you can find that information. We're updating that regularly. And I, I found particularly, I've recommended this to a number of constituents who've gotten in touch with me to start following your Facebook page because you update that very regularly. And that's a, been a good source of information as we're trying to wrap our minds around the, the enormity of what happened to our community. So thanks for doing that. Thank you. Other comments or questions? I, I do agree with Councillor Hawk that ARPA seems a very logical place for this. And one thing I would offer is when this event happened, it was about a month ago now, we were all in here as that sort of broke. Some people were outside the building and some were in the building and there was a difference on the wetness. But I, at that time, I remember we said multiple times that evening, thanks to our first responders, to our highway workers, emergency management, many of our responders in the room today, um, we appreciate very much the quick response to this. This is the follow through on all of that, trying to get us back to some sort of whole I would also add that I think every disaster we've had in this community, we've learned something new that, well, we could do this or do that, or this was like this. And it just seems like every year that just, that pace keeps picking up. I wish it weren't that way, but it's how it is. Uh, so I think this is not only appropriate, but this is what we're, we're doing as we figure all that out. Any other comments or questions? Let's go to comments from the public, again, this is a start towards making the community whole as we wait on potential federal and state uh, potential reimbursement on public assistance, as well as individuals wait for SBA loans. Uh, so if you have a comment, come forward here in the Nat U Hill room on this item or raise your hand on Teams. All right, seeing none, we will go to a roll call vote. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McCam? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. All right, that takes Thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That takes us to item B. Council, I move to approve the auditor's request to deappropriate and fund 8950-0000, account line 48012, Habitat Homes, in the amount of $320,000 in the capital category. Second. Okay. This is the auditor. Yes. Ms. Gregory, tell Thank us what you. we need to know. Okay, this is just a correction from where we appropriated um, an amount um, greater than the intention. So eight homes were approved, we appropriated for 10. So this is just correcting that. Okay. Um, counselors, any questions, comments? No? Let's go to public comment on the deappropriation. Uh, come forward in the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams. All right, seeing none, let's go to a roll call vote. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay, I think the way I read our agenda that will take us to E, and this is the added item that we had earlier. It's a discussion and possible approval of an appropriation and a deappropriation for ARPA funds. Council, I move to open a discussion and possible approval of an appropriation and or a deappropriation in fund 8950-0000 American Rescue F Plan Act Fund. Ms. Purdy is here to... Talk about Thank you. Thanks for catching that. Ms. Purdy is here to talk about this. This is an issue that she's raised regarding one of the ongoing ARPA projects, rural repair. Ms. Purdy, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I, hadn't, I think it's been a month now, maybe not even quite a month, um, when you and the commissioners met to discuss the um, use of our remaining um, ARPA funds. And at that time, um, 
we you had approved the use of an additional 200,000 for the rural repair um, housing program. And uh, that number was just um, kind of thought about based upon expenditures from the first part of the year with this project. And there actually was even conversation and concern that it would be expended um, before the end of the year, which is when we need to have everything obligated. And so discussion was held to have um, put an additional 1.2 million to the foundation um, in the intention that they would continue the program for, for, for you guys um, into the future. Well, I've already received um, applications that exceed the $200,000 that, um, that you guys have approved. So I would like to propose, and I'm open to any and all suggestions, um, I would like to propose that maybe um, we deappropriate the uh, 1.2 million um, the additional 1.2 million to the county, the, to county foundation, um, say let's go with $500,000, and, uh, and I'm not married to any of these numbers, um, but 500,000, put that into the rural, rural repair program, um, and then let's run the program for the county through the end of August, and that's just me being um, selfish, because it's a, <laughs> It's, it's, it's a lot to manage, um, so I kind of would like to have an end in sight, and then, and then that also gives you guys time to whatever is not expended out of that additional 500,000 could then be reappropriated to go to the, uh, found, the okay. community foundation okay. to continue this program. Is that clear as mud? And this has been a popular program. It it's an awesome program. It's going well. Yeah. It's doing what it was intended. Yeah. Do do? Comments or questions from council? Councilor Iverson, and then I'll go Hogg, McKim, and Munson. Uh, I'll start off with questions about timing. Uh, so uh, what I think what I heard you say was that y your, your proposal is to run the program through the end of August and then stop taking applications at that point. It's that way we can actually, pro or, uh, what's the ARPA uh, term? Uh, get those funds out there to the fa families that need it. <laughs> Obligate them, yeah. yeah Obligate this, thank you, yeah. All right, so the end of August is, is that time frame. Yeah, um, because that also allows for, so the last you know applications could come in at the very end of August, um, and then it takes the uh, contractor's time to actually get out there and do those things. And so we wanna make sure, uh, I always worry about something not being missed, you know, or something of that nature. So it gives us some overlapping time to where we can make sure that, um, I haven't made a mistake, so that would affect somebody else, so that's a bad thing. It's really interesting how popular this is. At the last meeting we talked about this, I was nervous about appropriating even more into the program, not because it wasn't needed, but because we didn't know if that money would be expended by December 31, right. and here you are. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. I've got Hawk next. Uh, yes, of course, I'm very excited that the rural housing program has been popular and many people are, are learning of uh, the assistance that's there. I do want to throw in the caveat that I think the most important thing we have to do, pressing that we have to do with ARPA right this very minute, is to do what we just talked about, is be responsive to our citizens to make certain that that the need for removing that debris, which is dangerous to leave uh, along the roadside, that we take care of that first. And then we could, whatever's left that's not expended in those particular dollars that Ms. Purdy's discussing, we could then, toward the end of the year, go ahead and, and move it on in the way of a contract or however we plan to do it. But I don't know exactly what, what other kind of dollars we might need. And I don't think we're going to know for, what, another month. We need just get the contractors out there picking it up and we'll know where we are. So I'd like to, for us to hold off on this deci decision until give us a few, you know, a few weeks to see where we are on that. That would be my suggestion. <laughs> I've got counselors lined up here to speak. Counselors, maybe as you comment, you could respond to that. I've seen some interest. 
We've got McKim next and then Munson. Yeah, yeah I guess I, I don't see what that really, I mean, we just appropriated $240,000 for for that very purpose and the and i mean i think the idea behind us getting another request was possibly to refund arpa which i agree we may not want to do i i'm i'm inclined to want to keep it in arpa as well but i mean i i i guess i feel like that we've already got the we've we've primed the pump on that we now also we've also primed the pump on rural uh housing and and we have a, a a backlog of requests of funds. So I guess I don't see a whole lot of advantage in in delaying. Um, may I ask, what are they both in the services category? So if we were to do the appropriation and deappropriation, it would it would both be just out of the services category? Yes. At this time, I believe we've only advertised five hundred thousand dollars to deappropriate. So we can't go over that um, today. Okay. What was that number? Sorry. In each category, we've advertised for five hundred thousand um, dollars up to, to we can up um, deappropriate up to that amount in each category. Okay. Um, however, we can't go over that amount. So, is that correct, Kim? That is correct. But you have to you just deappropriated three hundred and twenty earlier out of ARPA, so you you don't have that full amount. What I recommend is um, delaying the deappropriation to the um, August 13th, and I can deappropriate if you tell me what amount you want to, and then it'll be ready to deappropriate on the August 13th. Okay. Out of the uh, foundation yes. uh, grant. Okay. But but would we need to do something for an appropriation now? No, because we advertised at the max at eight million. So, um, so you can add additional appropriations. May I speak? Oh, well, not real money. <laughs> I, I would just, and I think, I think the the Habitat Homes was actually a 40s line, and if it's we're talking line. about a 30s line, I think those would be different, correct? Well, I I spoke with Carly, and this is the phone uh, the account line that she gave me. And it's, it's a, a 30s line, correct? Yes. And the the Habitat the appropriation on on the packet is a 40s line. Right, but we can we we advertised across to all. You know, so I don't know. It wasn't 500 for each category? Yes. <laughs> if so, it's 500 for each category, then so there's then, room. Okay. I was looking at the other one thinking it was a three. Sorry. So you can do 500. So, so potentially, counselors, as you think of a remedy here, we'll go to counselor months and next, and then maybe come back to that. Well, this is... This is very scrambled in terms of scheduling. The, they were both three. What's the best time to do this? And I, uh, I pay attention to what our staff recommends. So, yeah. Councilor McKenna. Well, and I guess to address Councilor uh, Hawk's concern, even if we gave Ms. Purdy five uh, five hundred thousand dollars to continue the rural housing program, we'd still have that seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars left in the, um, the, the the foundation account that we could then repurpose to debris removal if we okay. need to. So we still have that. Okay. Even if we give her the permission to right. go ahead now, we still have However, that. we work it out. I just hope that we don't go to our county general funds or our rainy day funds or anything to do this uh, because we need those dollars for other projects. So completely agree. So, I mean, what? It, however you think yeah. it'll work out, just try to try to made me feel better <laughs> that we aren't going to go to local tax dollars for this. We're going to take it out of that uh, America Rescue plan. I, I completely agree. So, well, it's your council, McKim. Well, so, so if is a motion needed then to yeah. essentially approve? I mean, we've already got the appropriate to essentially appropriate fifty five hundred thousand dollars into uh, the services category for the purpose of uh, of rural housing. Repair. Is that the motion that you would want? I, I guess in my mind, I think legally it's a 30s to 30s transfer. I think, however, how we've been behaving with the ARPA funding is we wanted to make sure that there were votes by uh, the council and the commissioners for specific purposes. And yes. so I think in, in order to keep with that philosophy that we're using specifically for ARPA, I think that is important. I'd also and I don't know if this is going to muddy the waters, and if it does, I apologize. Um, 
the fact that we're getting reimbursed for the tree removal items does play a role in whether ARPA is an appropriate fund or not. And I think that's a, a conversation we'll have at the next meeting when that appropriation is brought back up because if we get reimbursed for it after the end of the year, then we've got to There's ship it back it. to the feds. Yeah. And yeah, I, well, no, but that but that's a conversation that, that I think needs to be had, and I, I could, don't want to commingle. Could could get reimbursed. Yeah. Could. So, so, so council, I I move to amend the motion on the floor to appropriate five hundred thousand dollars in uh, eight nine five zero dash zero 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 ARPA in the services category for the purposes of rural housing repair. Second. Uh, a amended motion. Any that covers it. That covers it. Sounds like there's some agreement here. Let's take a formal it. vote on that covering. You could do a voice vote on the on the, on the motion and then, and then a roll call on okay. the underlying. All those in favor of the amendment offered by Councillor McKim signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. We're back to the underlying motion. Any further comments on that? Let's go to public comment on uh, this particular use of ARPA dollars. If you have any, come forward in the Nat U Hill room or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, we'll go ahead to a roll call vote. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor McCam? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Decker? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. That takes us to. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Do we need to, and I'm just asking, do we need to move forward with deappropriating 500,000 from the foundation? Currently over budgeted. Because otherwise she's saying that Okay, well the then, yeah. Council, I move we deappropriate the uh, uh, fund, uh, the ARPA, ARPA fund 8950-0000 in the services category by the amount of $500,000 for the foundation rural housing repair project. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? This will be important for the minutes, whoever's do, taking care of that. <laughs> we'll want this down. All right, let's see if the public has any comments on this deappropriation of ARPA dollars. Come forward in the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams. See, go to a roll call vote. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. Now. We'll move off ARPA and on to item 12. This is a request from the Sheriff's Office. Uh, Council, I move to approve the Sheriff's request in Fund 1000-0005, General Fund Sheriff, the creation of account line 36003 utilities, and to simultaneously approve an additional appropriation of $600 in the services category. Second. We want to welcome Jamie Janke from the Sheriff's Office is financial manager. Floor is yours. Thanks for waiting. Thank you. So this is just a little housekeeping thing. We've got some items that have been in the commissary fund that are for the sheriff's office, and this Duke utility bill is one of them. Um, so we just needed to create a line so that we can actually pay for it ourselves instead of out of the commissary fund. Okay. Thank you very much. Comments or questions from council? Okay. All right, seeing none, let's see if the yeah. public has any, okay. uh, can, uh, Michelle. Yes, I think we need to amend the motion uh, and to remove the additional appropriation of $600. I spoke with Jamie uh, this afternoon. She has enough in her um, um, services line to do an in-house transfer. So am I correct, Jamie? Yes. Council, I move we uh, amend the motion on the floor to remove the additional appropriation. Second. All right, uh, we have an amended motion, or we have a proposed amended motion. Any comments on that? Just 
Yeah. Th thank you, uh, Michelle, for bringing that up. And that, that's always something we like to do. And I know you, you keep on everybody. So you're, you're welcome. I, um, I didn't catch it until this afternoon and I'm going and I was checking on budgets and that was one of them. It just kind of almost slipped through the crack, but I caught it. So thank you. All right. Let's see if the public's got, wait, wait, we've got an amended motion, right? So on that one, we um, counselors, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye, the amendment. Aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, so it's been amended. Now back to the underlying motion. Any further comments on that? Just, Just creation of the line. There we go, that's all it is. If you, if the public have a comment, raise your hand on Teams or come forward in the Nat U Hill room. Seeing none, let's go to... You can do a voice vote since now it's just the creation of a line. Mm -hmm. In that case, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. Let's go to item B. Council, I move to approve the sheriff's request and fund 1000-0626 general fund animal control, the creation of account line 17208 uniforms, and simultaneously approve an additional appropriation of $2,400 in the personnel category. Second. Okay. Same thing. Um, I would like to amend this one also. I think that we have enough money in the personnel lines to transfer in once this line has been created. Um, my predecessor paid for the uniforms out of a fund um, that did not have this line, so we want to put it into the right one. Okay. Thank you. Move we amend the motion on the floor to eliminate the additional appropriation. Second. All right. We've got an amendment on the floor. Any discussion on that? Uh, counselors, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Now we're at back to the underlying motion, and thank you for helping us get this right and patience as we did it. Uh, on the underlying motion, I'm seeing other council comments, and so let's go to public comment. If you've got one, come forward to the NATU Hill or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, let's go to voice vote on this. Yeah, I'll learn eventually. My term will be up. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That takes us to C. Uh, council, I'm combining items C and D into one motion. I move to approve the sheriff's request and fund 8103-0000 operation pullover grant for an additional appropriation of 12 thousand two hundred sixty nine dollars and fifty one cents in the personnel category and to simultaneously approve the deappropriation in fund one zero 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 dash zero 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 five general fund sheriff in the amount of twelve thousand two hundred sixty nine dollars and fifty one cents in the personnel category second all right this is just the quarterly um, amount of money that we get reimbursed for the grant and we're just shifting the funds where they need to be. Okay. Counselors, do you have any questions or comments? Congratulations on the grant. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, was the grant's coming in. Uh, I'm seeing no questions from the counselors. I will invite the public to make comments on this. Come forward in the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, let's go to a voice vote. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Councillor okay. Iverson. Oh, sorry. No, no, no sorry, sorry. Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Motion but, passed. Can I vote? <laughs> Ouch. Oh, she said no. <laughs> Councillor Iverson. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Did we miss something, Councillor? No, no, I know. We're good. I'm, I'm All right. It's a group effort up here. Sorry. All right, and that was your last one. Thank you so much. All right, now that takes us to, we didn't have a D, did we? We did, it's the, we did. You combined, you combined, you combined them. Oh, gotcha, we're, we're, gotcha. So let's do D and E, I guess. No, just E. All right, we're gonna move on to E, and this is a discussion regarding proposed changes to, to the Merit Deputy Retirement Plan. Um, I appreciate very much the deputies getting us more information uh, last week and to come in and talk to us about this. Sheriff, welcome. I'll let you start it off. All right, well, good evening. 
Um, I'm going to say a few words while the presenters walk up to the table yeah, and get ready to, to uh, talk to you about the proposal, the new changes that they are proposing. And I could tell you, um, when I was first made aware of it, it made a lot of sense to me. I could, this is the reason why. We hold ourselves, to me, I consider them to be Monroe County's finest, so we hold ourselves to a very high standard. I mean, that's, we, we, we hold ourselves to a higher standard. But to continue to do that, we need to attract people that are at a certain level to fit this, this organization. And one of the things that the council did uh, that really helped us attract more people was the pay raise. I mean, and I thank you for that because we received people, uh, attracted people that are high caliber and it fits from the people that are standing in front of you right now. Now, that being said, well, one of the things that the surrounding county, and I can assure you, they're watching us because we have people that transferred from them to us, which does several things. One is it saves us not sending someone to the academy. It's a lateral, okay? We don't have to spend as much time on the training as well because they're already highly trained. We just show them our culture in Monroe County because it's sometimes somewhat different. However, one of the things that might happen is if they raise their pay raise like the council did, you know, they're going to start looking at what other ways do we attract people and retain them. And the tricky thing about that is, is this. The pool is very low right now. It really is. So we had a momentum to keep going. And I always tell our people we always have a way to improve, to better ourselves for the betterment of the department, which in turn be for the betterment for the county and the citizens that we served. So when they brought that proposal as far as the pension, that is a way to literally, literally bring in more people be prepared that the, the surrounding county might have a pay raise that we might lose people because if, if they offer a better retirement plan, that's important. So I'm very grateful that you allowed us the time for a lot of the presenters and, and, and the finest bet that you see standing behind me to show you the support for this thing because they're the ones that thought about it. They're the ones telling us, if you want to retain this high standard that you keep pushing, we need to have all the tools in the toolbox to recruit and retain. That's the main thing. What we don't want to do is recruit people, train them very well, and then they find another department to go to because of a better retirement plan. I hope that that kind of resonates with you. So, so thank you again for allowing us to, to, to give a, a presentation on that topic. Pass it on. Welcome. Thanks for waiting, by the way. Thanks to all of you for waiting. And we tried to move a little quick, but we get hung up a bit. Lots of county business to handle. Uh, thank you, Sheriff Marte, for the introduction. I'm Jeff Brown, deputy with the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. This is my cohort, uh, Corporal Josh Fuller, uh, with UPS, because he's in Brown, right? <laughs> uh, we're to present the Monroe County Police Retirement um, Actuarial Study. Uh, we had provided to us by One America. Um, I have a PowerPoint that was provided to TSD. It's just kind of a workflow. I'll pull it up. <clears throat> was this PowerPoint given to the council earlier? It was not. It's just more for me to be able to follow along. The data was emailed to, uh, report to the council. Okay. Could you make sure that I get a copy of it for our records? Cause I have to include it in the minutes. Absolutely. Thank you. And TSD, you got it up there. Okay, thank you for doing it. We'll take a second here and we'll get it.
There it is. How many of us love teams? <laughs> teams is not the most friendly on share screen. There we there go. We go. Thank you. Well, that looks good. All right. Well, just to reiterate what Sheriff Marte spoke of, uh, you guys have been great to us. Uh, the pay raise has really changed the dynamics for our hiring. Uh, Corporal Fuller is going to talk on that later. Um, but now we want the full package. We want the best. We have to be the best. I do believe we are close to the top uh, for our pay, our benefits, our department, our staffing throughout the state. And I'm very invested in the department because I'm going to retire. I see the light. It's still a long <laughs> ways away, but I see it. Uh, so if we go to the next slide for recruitment, uh, pre-COVID, Recruitment numbers were extremely low. We were struggling to even get a good recruitment application pile. Uh, and so with this change and a retirement that we're proposing, we're really wanting to attract some of the middle-aged officers uh, from surrounding counties or throughout the state uh, because we do have such a comprehensive benefit package, salary, retirement, uh, equipment, and a well-rounded department. We might be able to even steal uh, some additional offers from Bloomington City Police Department because they're pretty, they're solid, so why can't we steal their good guys, right? Let's be greedy. Um, with the retirement, we're wanting to do a, a kind of a two for uh, 50 years old and an eight year, go ahead. Jim. I hate to interrupt, but I think we need to get to the next slide. We're still on slide one, right? You want slide two? Yes, slide two. Okay. You, you may need to speak louder so he can hear up there. Okay. Yeah. We're going to do offer two things of 50 years of age for a minimum draw with eight years of service. So if you exceed, if you have eight years or more and you're age 50, you can draw and retire. Uh, and then the other half is no age limit with 25 years of service. So ideally, if you are 21 years old, uh, fresh out of the academy, you can draw your retirement at 46, should you so choose, and you can pursue different career options, whether another public sector job uh, at a different agency, or go into a private thing, or just live life to its fullest at age 46, the American dream. Uh, that's the meat and potatoes um, for the study. Uh, to assist with recruitment, uh, you know, your new guys can see the reward uh, from day one uh, so they can pursue something else at age 46, and we'll get those mid-year, mid-career guys uh, and girls, new hires, to come to our department versus look elsewhere uh, to the north, Hamilton County, uh, Fort Wayne area. Do you want to touch on the recruitment numbers? Sure. Like Deputy Brown said, um, our last... We, in the last year, have hired five lateral officers from other surrounding counties that we weren't pulling that kind of numbers before. But with your um, raise that we've got, we've really been able to up that. So we're, right now, within the year, we've hired five laterals. We have three currently in our current hiring <laughs> process that are at the end stages of the hiring. So if they are hired, that would make us eight lateral officers that we um, are already certified officers that we've pulled from other surrounding areas that we in turn have spent a lot less time training. Um, most lateral officers were putting six to eight weeks in a field training program and then you're out on the road. If we um, hire a new guy and you go to the or new girl hire, and you go to the academy, you're looking at a 15 week academy plus 12 to 15 weeks for FTO. So while the new officers at ILEA, it's approximately the county spending nineteen thousand dollars in um, salary, and we're not using them because they're being trained at the academy. So if we were getting more laterals, six to eight weeks versus a new new hire could be 27, 28 weeks before they're even out on the road serving the community. 
So our last process, we had over 50 applicants, which is unheard of. We, like Jeff was saying before, we're not pulling that kind of numbers. 10 of those were laterals and three of those were potentially looking to hire, which is pretty good numbers for us. Um, right now we still of that process have 30 applicants that have turned in applications that are not certified. So we're still looking at 30 people that want to work here because of the packages we're offering. We just want to make that package better to keep the good ones we have and start bringing more over. If that makes sense. So we've got recruitment. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. Retention, how are we gonna keep everybody here? Um, average years of service for our department is eight years. That includes myself and Corporal Fuller. Um, we have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Randy Jacobs is 23 years. He, he you know, he's the top uh, year for the years of service. Uh, in addition to Corporal Fuller and I, there's 15 people that are close to the eight year median, uh, 10, people or 10 deputies fall between the 10 to 14 years of service. So they're rapidly approaching the 20 or 25 years of service. And then three uh, deputies fall within the 15 to 19 years of service. Uh, and everybody's asking what's at the end of the tunnel for the 20 to 25 years of service. Am I going to be able to survive without another job? Uh, do I have to continue working? Am I going to be stuck here? Um, using that word lightly for the sheriff's office. Um, what's the purpose of doing all this time? Same with any other job. Uh, you know, you're gonna be stuck there and forced to live there and you may not be happy, may have a bad morale. Um, but usually about this time frame, most deputies like myself are looking forward towards the end and starting to plan and adjust accordingly. Uh, we do have the 457B. Uh, which is a supplemental retirement plan that's um, contributed by each deputy and based on his or her own, own, own choices. Um, if we could go to the next slide. But sadly, we have a shelf life. Uh, we can only override and rewrite the hardships of the job uh, so much. From uh, recently, we had the five-year-old drowning, at one of our uh, Apartment complexes, uh, March 21, we had a line of duty death with James Driver. Uh, even with our addition of our uh, employee assistance program, our mental health provider, um, we still have the mindset and the unwritten expectation to bury our grief and our job hardships, put our boots on and come to work. Well, we knew what the job was when we signed up for it. We still know what the job is now. We just like to have that light at the end of the tunnel to maybe be able to enjoy uh, you know, what's left, like one deputy, he already has his average life expectancy due to family history, and he's getting close to the end, and he's not retired yet. So we're kind of trying to plan for that to give everybody a little bit of hope and to make this, you know, top-notch uh, place to be employed and retire from. Uh, in addition to shelf life, you can go to the next slide. You're under constant watch and criticism from the public eye. Uh, you did this as an officer. You didn't do this as an officer. Uh, the joke is if you have two or more deputies or officers in a meeting area such as lunch, uh, it's the safest place in the county. It is funny and it's lighthearted. But I mean, I've been doing this 14 years total. It gets a little old hearing the same joke. Uh, um, kind of like firemen. They're parking lot makers, not house savers, or uh, firemen or policemen's real heroes. All of the jokes, they're all fun at games, but it's just as redundant. Uh, and we're, we're expired like milk. Uh, we have shelf life. It's also cheaper to hire new guys because the salary is cheaper. The benefits that uh, veteran officers use may be more than a new hire. Back problems, leg problems, other health issues, uh, poor eating habits uh, that all cost the county more in our health insurance use and benefit costs. Uh, fresh look, uh, they can be in better shape or up to date educations, their willingness to learn the new ways or adapt to the new culture versus be mundane and stuck uh, in the old ways and it loses the good old boy um, 
feel because we want to be up to date. We have a very diverse community here with Monroe County. And I think that we should uh, recognize that and not necessarily push our veterans out, but show them that we appreciate their time and uh, reward them with being able to retire, not have to you know, be forced to stay here to make ends meet. Um, next slide. That's kind of the gist of it as for our actions or our request uh, through the eyes of the merit deputies uh, for this change in the retirement. Uh, you did receive the actual study with the actual numbers because that's what really matters is the money and the cost. Um, just to build on that a little bit, like, like we said before, you guys have been awesome to us as far as pay and all. We just kind of want to create the total the total package for a guy that wants to, or a girl that wants to work here. Just make it the best place they can, best place in the state is kind of what we're shooting for. Gotcha. All right. Well, I think, Chief Deputy, you want to add? Yeah, just very quickly, I, you know, we all know that when we come before this body, obviously it's because there's a fiscal impact or we wouldn't be here. So, you know, I want to address that elephant in the room right off the, right off the bat. So we have, we have asked um, Elaine Beatty and Ben Langenhammer. Uh, ben works for One American McCready and King. He's the one that puts together a fiscal note. So I would like for them to at least, uh, you know, run through this so that, you know, no information is, is left on the table so you know exactly what we're looking at in terms of cost and how they arrived at, at those decisions. And then, uh, you know, if you, if Leslie have questions for these fellas, um, at, at least we'll have that part already um, kind of went through. And now I've got some closing comments because I know it's, it's, gonna, it's a budget issue, you know, and that's, that's the truth of the matter. So I, I didn't want to interrupt what they're saying, but I, didn't want to, I, don't, I don't want us to get away from using the resources that we have here to go over this fiscal note. And we appreciate them being here and appreciate your comments. Let's do this. Let's go to, if you can tell us, and yet yeah, we're always thinking about fiscal impact. That's kind of our, our part of it. Please. Hello, thank you, Council. I'm Ben Langhammer with One America Financial. Uh, McCready and Keene is uh, the name we do business under. Um, so in that actuarial study, page six summarizes the impact on the county contribution requirements. Um, so currently the county is com uh, contributing under the recommended county contribution level, which is a 15 year amortization of the unfunded liability. And so the study results in about a $200,000 increase in that county contribution requirement on an annual basis. That is not just a one time cost, but a recurring cost. Um, the funding method we use targets a level percentage of payroll. So that is a 5.5% increase as a percentage of payroll. So if payroll increases, um, that is another thing to consider is the dollar amount will increase in regard to that as well. Um, so the overall impact in total uh, is about a $1 million total upfront cost that's amortized over that 15 year period into the county contribution requirements. Uh, and that represents the current service and salary of the officers that is this is um, reflecting as part of because they've already accrued those years of service and so that's reflecting we do use the assumption that the deputies would retire at the earliest uh, retirement age so with under these new scenarios it would be at that 50 and eight years or 20 years of service whichever comes first say that one more time slow so we assume that they will retire at their earliest retirement age so it's kind of a comparison of the uh, 25 years of service okay. or age 50 with eight years of service, whichever would occur first. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Iverson. I was wondering so that those watching on teams or those in the audience can understand what's being uh, talked about. Could we please share page 126 of today's packet on the screen? That way oh, everyone else can see the numbers that you were just talking about. They can be a little abstract uh, verbally. <laughs> yes. What's the number again? 126. It's page six of the actuarial study. 126 in the packet or page six of the actuarial study. 
Should say summary of costs at the top. Sweet. Okay. Yep. That, it? that looks like mm -hmm. it. Okay. Ooh, can we make it larger? You can blow it up in any way. That's fine. Okay. I know we're really asking for a lot with teams. <laughs> but. And really, I'd focus, if you can uh, zoom in, I'd focus on that kind of center section, the recommended county contribution, because that's what's yeah. been contributed. Okay. We provide wow. a range of numbers uh, depending on uh, you know what the county wants to budget, but that recommended is really what the county has been, uh, at least in recent, recent history, contributing. You say that, I can't see that. It's really hard to see. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I understand the difference between the two columns, the 2025 mm -hmm. valuation versus 2025 study. Yeah, I don't the, understand. Yeah, the 2025 stuff. valuation is the current plan provision. So we prepare an annual valuation to determine those county contribution requirements for the ongoing funding of the plan. We're doing an apples and apples comparison, just changing those plan provisions that are up um, as part of this presentation. And so that right column, the 2025 study, is what those county contribution requirements would look like if these new plan provisions were to go into effect as of 1-1-2024. So the change is really about 200,000? Correct. That, okay. And, and there's an initial, to catch us up with who we have, there's an initial million dollar buy-in that's rolled into these numbers. Oh, that's okay. kind of the upfront okay. cost of the, pr it's okay. the prior service cost is another way to look at it. You know, deputies have accrued, he was mentioning, you know, eight years of service. This kind of rolls into the cost because it hasn't been funded for those years of service. So it is all part of these numbers. It's included in there, amortized over different periods. That top level, the accelerated is over a 10 year period. That middle or recommended that you have been contributing is over a 15 year period. And then the bottom or the minimum under Indiana code is a 20 year period. It's about 200,000 annually to our additional to Correct. our budget. Or 5.5% of payroll. Cause again, our funding method targets a percentage of payroll, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, counselors, Councilor Iverson. Did I see that correctly that vestment is Oh, after eight years? Correct. That's for all levels of, uh, of staff in the department? For the merit, merit deputy. Sure, right, okay. Yeah, this, this plan only covers the merit deputies, so. And so it would cover 25 years of service or age 50 with eight years of service? Correct. One of those two, so two different ways to get there. Okay. Eight years minimum to vest in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Counselor. I know counselors, um, one of the key things I asked for last week, and they responded very quickly, was this information so we could take a look at it and begin to think about uh, potential outcomes with our budget. Um, we're not far from budget, actually. We're about a, we are. literally a month from it. Can I, can I ask a question just yeah, to go right ahead. clarify? Uh, and, and I'm looking at page. 30 and and I, and and I just want to make sure I'm following this correctly. So the retirement any age after 25 years, that's assuming you're under I think that it means you're assuming you're under 50. So correct. And and so would that that would be considered a special early retirement as opposed to a normal retirement so they wouldn't be eligible for that 2% a year after 20 if they were an early or they would still get the benefit formula, that 2% over the okay. 20 years of uh, service would apply. Um, it would fall under the special early. Currently, those provisions are at age 52 with at least 25 years of service. So really, this is just removing that age requirement on a provision that's already in the plan. And, and just so you guys know, it, uh, how it is, is right now, after 20 years, you get your normal retirement amount. Every year you work over 20 years, you get an additional 2% of your salary in pay up to 12 years. So they could get up to 72%, but they would have had to work for 32 years. And so I'm just trying to figure out how those two sure. kind of sure. fall apart. 
for figuring this out. Councilor McKim. And then in terms of our role, would we actually ap approve the changes in the plan or do we just approve the, the budget essentially, the additional budget for next year? State code requires the department to approve it and then you approve it as well. So you would approve the actual amendments to the plan and, and you have to budget for it. And then budget for it, okay, thanks. And then, this is past the merit board, is that correct? Yes. And is that considered the departmental the sheriff's not disagreeing with this, obviously, so, okay. Uh, other questions or things you want to know, counselors, or comments? Councilor Hawk? Uh, yes, I think this is a lot for us to take in in one meeting, and I'm accustomed to working with you folks past many, many years. Uh, and we have to be very careful, and that's part of, at the state level, the legislative committee is looking at what the different obligations are going to be to keep us actuarially sound. That's a hard word to say. So we have to make certain that we're not just doing what our heart wants us to do, but what the pocketbook will allow us to do. And so I want to study this. I want to listen to advice from our legal department, and of course, all of you fine folks there, you know that for my vote, I always do the best I can to support law enforcement, but I don't want the county to go belly up because we bit off more than we could chew. So I want to be able to understand it, look at other budget requests as well, and figure out where we are on this. Um, but who wouldn't like to retire early? <laughs> can't be me. Uh, some of us can't do it. Some of us would get bored to tears to be retired. So we have to think about the people that are relying on us to make good decisions for them. Uh, so I appreciate the fact that you brought us that information, and I look forward to seeing what we come up with. One, um, Councilor Iverson. Uh, yeah, let me just uh, jump on that back one. I, I really appreciate you all being here. It is so nice to see all of you here and so nice to hear your leadership say that you brought this to the leadership to bring to all of us. That, that speaks volumes in the trust that you have that uh, we can work together to make sure that, you know, not only can your job be what you want it to be, but also that you can bring in partners to work with you that you trust and respect. So thank you for bringing that to us. The other thing I'll point out is um, the asset values are appreciating nicely. So good job, guys. Uh, you guys are in good hands, it looks like. So, I, But I agree with Councilmember Hawk. Uh, we do need more time to, to sit with this and to look at the way that it's going to impact the budget. But we have been given quite a bit of data to do that with. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Chief Deputy, you had some comments. Why don't you come forward? Before we keep no, just, going. A, just a few closing Please. things here. Um, in response to your question, we did uh, we did take this to the mayor board on July 10th. So we we had uh, Elaine and been there. Uh, we went through that that process, which is it's not particularly required by statute, but is but is required by our plan plan uh, document that's been approved by the IRS. Uh, so it, it's it's already went through the first phase. It comes here obviously, and then. As as I said, and I've got the statute here, but but Jeff's well aware of it. It it requires both the obviously the budget part and the plan amendment be approved by the fiscal body. So, um, just a, a few closing things here. Um, I I wanted to talk a little bit about our first days and weeks here at the Mineral County Sheriff's Office, and you know uh, the the men and women you see here. Um, you know, as as happens every four years or eight years or whatever the case may be, uh, you know, when we first walk in the office, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like a couple of alley cats standing there looking at each other. Are we going to be friends or are we going to fight? And, you know, it, it took some time for them to adjust to us and us to adjust to them. But I will tell you this, um, over the last year and a half, uh, you know, I have watched these uh men and women approach their jobs and not so much about what they do is how they do it, how they approach it. They're very dedicated. They know their jobs well. They understand the community in which they work. 
and they strive every day to meet the expectations of both the sheriff and the community and the folks that are looking at their performance. So when they came to us with this, uh, it, you know, it was basically, it was our pleasure to, to support them. We, we talked for several hours about this and we kind of put together this, this structure here. But I will tell you this, that 25 years in this arena is a long time. It really is. I've been doing it for 41. I ran out of gas about 10 times and somehow refueled up to come back. <laughs> but the ISP, where the sheriff and I both come from, it's a 25 and out plan. And the beauty of that is, is that if you're ready to go and you know it in your heart that it's time for me to go, you need to have that option as a police officer because if you feel like you're trapped in this job and you have no way out financially that you can't leave, bad things happen. They just do. It's not good for the community. It's not good for the police officers. So having that, that time period where you can see that light at the end of the tunnel, like uh, Jeff and Josh said, is very, very important to people in this field um, because it is, it is kind of hard to describe it to people who are not in it what you experience on a daily basis. And we can go through all of that over and over again, but I think you, I think you probably... I have seen over the years, you know, the things that occur in this county and how your sheriff's office responds to that. So it's, the sheriff and I kind of see it as our mission to, our job to set the mission for this agency. And I think we've done that. Uh, but more, uh, you know, more importantly, it's it's our job to set the mission, but it's it's very important for us to partner with these guys in fulfilling that mission. And it, that's what it is. It's got to be a partnership because if 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 we don't partner with these guys and these these ladies and gentlemen that come out here to do this, it's pretty hard for us to succeed. And I will tell you, every success that we have is not because of what I and the sheriff have done or uh, the command staff. It's because of what these guys have done every day that that enables us to accomplish the mission that we set. Um, I've made myself a few notes here. I'm trying not to not to skip over them. It's a, another one of our responsibilities is to improve their lives in any way we can. You know, I've I have been around agencies and I've been around agency heads that don't give that the significance that it is due. And if you're not looking at the people that are behind the scenes doing the work and doing everything you possibly can to improve their lives, then I would submit to you that you're a failure as, as a leader in any environment in which you're working. So that's what we're trying to do here today is show support for, for these folks. They put a tremendous amount of effort into what they do every day. Um, and I, it's, it's our job to try to improve the quality of their lives. And not just for them, it's their families too. And I think you'll see some family members out there. So in closing, what, I'd, I, what I would like to ask of the council, it, it's our intent to include the, the fiscal impact of this um, request in our budget. We'll separate it out, obviously, so you'll know what it is. But I guess my request of you is for these folks out here in the interest of transparency, when will you make that decision so that they are going to be allowed to be here and be present and hear what that decision is? Do you have a date that, that we can pass along to them? Uh, I, I would say in the budget process itself so we will hear that hearing for what your recommendation is and we'll look at all the priorities that you have we'll take that from every single department and then we will do what we always do which is work through the easier not easier and other items just like we did when we did that payroll Correct. increase a few years back and try to work it out and I so, wish I had a more precise date on that, but it's a imprecise process. I think our I think our date is the sixth. Is that when we're 
or our, our budgets have to be submitted by the 6th. Yeah. Is that right? And then you'll let us know what date we're going to come in and speak yes. with the council yes. so I can let them know that date. Yeah. And, you know, I guess my, my question is a decision may or may not be made on that date Definitely. as to whether or not this is going to go forward. What we do is we take the giant, I always say mud balls, but it's not helping anyone, but <laughs> we take the giant mud ball requests we receive from every department, every priority, and we start figuring out how that looks versus revenues that we have. And we start trying to whittle and shape that into the budget we adopt by October date certain, I believe, early October, am I right? You, um, the public, the public hearing is on um, October first, and then you'll be voting on the budget on October fifteenth. So on on the first, we would take public comment on the request, and then we would use that comment to further shape and on October fifteenth vote on it. Council McKim. Of our budget work sessions, they will start after Labor Day. Uh, we've got six days, and I don't, I, I know that we've got like three one week, two one week, and, and one another, but I have not even started scheduling those By department, uh, department yeah. reviews yet. Council McKinney. I, I guess I was just going to say that's the budget side, but then there's the approval of the plan <laughs> amendments which we have to do. And it sounds like that's something the council, the chair could schedule at an appropriate time. I mean, you, you that, I, I guess what I'm getting at is, yeah, the budget is very diffuse and it has to do with lots, you know, we're putting together lots of inputs and outputs, but at some point we will actually have to take a vote on the, the actual plan amendments. And so I think, you know, you can schedule that at a time that's appropriate and then everybody will have the opportunity to uh, to actually make comment on you know all the, the deputies and families in the room will have the opportunity to actually make comment well my, so i'd my, say that's kind of a better bright line to give them that's not a date i know but i think that's kind of a better bright line than the, the whole budget process but, 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 I, I understand. i'm sorry go ahead but, but that's contingent upon funding the plan amendment yeah, I mean, you could say it's it's chicken or egg. I mean, if if we agree to a pl if we agree to something, then we're agreeing to fund it, right? That's true. That's true. That, and that was going to be my question. I was going to use the exact term, the chicken and the egg thing again. Yeah, I mean, so we, it, are around. are we going to include? Uh, do we have to look at the fiscal note of it first, and then go to approve the plan amendment, or do or do we do the plan amendment and then address the uh, fiscal part of it? I, I just, and I'll, I'm not trying to put y'all on the spot. I'm just trying to, yeah. these guys are, you know, this is important to them and I want them to know kind of what process yeah. we're looking at. In my view, we have to look at the fiscal first because that ultimately, I mean, we, we can say we want to do something, but whether or not we can fund it in that budget, I think it comes down to that. I don't know any other way to get there for my piece. Okay. Um, and let me offer a couple of comments to this regard. I remember well when we did those increases a couple of years ago, and that was a battle in addition to the COLA that was last year. Those were processes that literally went late into the year. One of the things that came up in that, and it was a, a point where I, I have to admit, I got a little frustrated in the process. Somebody said, uh, made a comment and they meant it well. And it was, there's a lot of passion in the room. Is this all that you care for us with this? And I, that, that stuck with me for a long time. What I'll offer is if it were left to me, and it's not, it's left to seven up here, but if it were left to me and we could do all of this, we, we wouldn't even be having the discussion. We just do it. But it's finding, making sure that the revenue is there in a sustainable way so that it can be done. And then also taking into account any implication or factor for any other department that this starts the ways that we affect because we deal with literally every single department and their benefit package as well and so that it's the budget to me is the place where all that starts to get ironed out because the dollars say literally what you can do and sometimes what you can't do but won't, would want to do I don't know if this is helping at all, but I, I just want to be clear on that. We care about every single person in here and what they offer and what they bring. And under the most ideal circumstances, we'd go beyond this. And I'm sure we could think of a lot of ways to do it. 
but we got to get there fiscally to do it. And that was part of the discussion here too, is that when we come before this body, we wanted to make sure we were being reasonable. And this is kind of where we landed, where uh, we felt it was reasonable, we felt like it was attainable, and we felt like it addressed uh, one, you know, a couple of the major issues that we have in this field in terms of how you exit out of here. Um, so, yeah, I, I get exactly what you're saying. So, you know, I, I just want to let you know that these guys here and these folks here, this is their, this is a, a, a well-intentioned um, proposition to kind of meet in the middle as, as best we can because, I mean, if you start talking about pension colas and all kinds of things like that, it just, it, it can get out of hand real quick. Uh, so we tried to, we tried to parry that down where it it really provided these these fine uh, men and women the ability to go through their career um, and have the options available to them to have a quality of life after they leave here, but not burden the county uh, any more than than we have to. And you're never a burden. I, I want to offer that the folks that work in that department, you're never a burden to the taxpayers of this county. They just have to <laughs> help us support yes. what you, how, how we offer benefits, take care of uh, compensation, et cetera. Okay, Councilor McKim. I'm sorry, I just have another question. First of all, I really appreciate the um, presentation on the, the presentation that you gave and the presentation from the uh, actuaries. I know I'm gonna have follow-up questions on the study. Who should we direct them to? Should we direct them to Corporal Fuller or who, to whom, if we have questions about the study? Can we get them most efficiently? We'll take that. We'll just uh, direct it to uh, myself or Josh. Okay. I'll give you an email or point of contact information oh, for everybody. Helpful, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Hawk. Right. Um, bringing it right down to, I, I heard you say 200, if I understood you correctly, one of the things you were saying was like $200,000 additional dollars we will need for each year for five years so it's about a million dollars then over the is that what you were indicating did i'm trying to figure out if there's some kind of magic bullet number that we can say this is how much money we have to come up with yeah. out of our budget uh could you levy increase I could, it was hard to hear could you repeat oh i'm question? sorry so. okay um, I wondered if I heard you correctly or understood you correctly, that it will be about $200,000 more each year, but you average that over five years, so it's like a million dollars that we would be spending over a five-year plan, five-year term, to put this plan in motion as it is being presented. Of course, it's going to change. Uh, depending on the age of the people that we have employed and, and so forth and how many decide to take that earlier time out. But did I, I mean, if we, what I think we're going to try to come up with is how much do we need to budget for every year to make a sound in this plan? Yeah, and so the study results show the comparisons. And so under that recommended, it's a $200,000 increase in the annual contribution, which should be viewed as a long-term increase, not a one-time increase. And that does go towards amortizing that kind of upfront cost of the slightly over a million dollars over a 15-year period. Oh, I thought you said five years. No, 15. So the top uh, level was a 10-year period, middle level was a 15-year period, and the bottom level was a 20-year period when you're looking at those and reviewing that, so. But still, okay. the idea is that it's basically a permanent two five percent to a two hundred correct thousand dollars. That's the best way to look at it. Is it is a an ongoing cost? Um, we could get more technical mm -hmm. into that, but you know, over that when it, that fifteen year period ends, you know, kind of the unfunded liability is expected to be paid off, but that kind of would really muddy the waters. <laughs> sure. but, but to start with, we need to know it's going to be at least two hundred thousand dollars additional. We need to budget for. Ongoing for that recommended county contribution, right. correct, or 5.5 percent of payroll, because um, for payroll the future increases, thinking, then that amount will be increase as well. Yep. Well, I'm slow, but I think you got that. No, nope, you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred thousand is the the key. Correct. Continuing. Com when the comparison of the current plan provisions to the new plan right. provisions. 
I also want to say I appreciate the candor that you have about the job and what you do and and all the things that you deal with, which we know that we're getting just a, a, a fraction of the side of the dime, right? There's a ton there. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. One thing under the sheriff's leadership in this room, there's been a ton more discussion and candor about how life is among your profession, among the folks you interact with, all that. And I appreciate that. While all these aren't easy things to figure out, good headaches to have as we try to figure it out. And I appreciate that uh, directness with it. So thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Welcome. Counselors, anything else as you contemplate? And all counselors, you have the uh, actuary information that they have passed to us. And I, I'm wondering, uh, since we have added uh, positions, I believe we've, or at least filled those positions, and we've added increases in salary, where are we now as far as being sound on our plan? And if I'm not expecting an answer now, but uh, where are we as far as being sound with the plan as it sets? So I, I'm looking at you, Jeff Cockrell, to uh, at some point in time, get us that information. I'm looking at you, Mr. Actuary, to get us that information. We, we get their there. annual plan every year. So, I mean, and we submit that when we do our insurance and all that. So we have that information. We will keep wrestling and working with this towards the the door to wherever we're heading. So I appreciate all this. Anything else you wanted to add before we close the agenda item? Well, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to, to listen to what they wanted to present to you. Uh, I echo what the chief said. It means a lot. There's a lot of hard work that went through this, and, and, I, and I get it. You have to do your job. Uh, but we, we, we were remiss if we didn't do our job and inform you of the reason why they're sitting in front of you right now. Because what I don't want us to do is at all the gains that we made as a group, as a team, that we lose that and the possibility is there. And I have to be very frank. So, but I understand you have a job to do as well. So if you don't have any questions with me, that concludes our presentation. If there's any questions for the sheriff? Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, Thank you again. Okay. Okay. I understand. Chief Deputy Parker might have rushed back to the county for this. Real, real quick, uh, and I want to address uh, Councillor Hawk's question there. Ben's got that information right here that he can address the funding ratio of the plan. So you were, now you were asking about the funded status of the plan. In that study on page 14, there is a comparison of the current liability to the current assets of the plan. So uh, in the valuation that determined, it, determined the things under the current provisions, the funded ratio is about 71.3% funded. Um, and due to that kind of upfront cost, again, that little over $1 million for that prior service cost, that would decrease that funded status down to about 66.2. Um, and again, that, that amortization over that 15 year period is going to pay off, is working to pay off this unfunded status, so. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments from counselors? Thank you again, all of you, for sitting here for a little bit and spending your evening with us. We appreciate that. We will keep working on it. Again, counselors, as you have questions, things you need, we will follow up and we'll figure out what our next steps are. Thank you so much. Appreciate it very you. much. All right. Let me look at this agenda here. Next is item 13. It's a request from the auditor. Council, I move to approve the auditor's request and fund 1171-0000 County Major Bridge, the creation of a new account line as set out in the agenda and to simultaneously approve additional appropriations in the amount of $806,566.67 in the services category. Second. Yes, hello again. Um, just coming to you um, requesting appropriation um, for bond payments. So obviously this is something we must do. It's just a formality, so thank you. All right, questions, comments from council? All right, seeing none on this, on item 13A, we'll go to comments from the public. If you have any, come forward in the NATU Hill or raise your hand on Teams. All right, seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Hogg. Yes. Councillor Munson. 
Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay, item B for 13. Council, I move to approve the auditor's request in fund 8106-0000, Rural Transit, an additional appropriation in the amount of $238,336 in the services category. Second. Okay. Auditor, what uh, can you <laughs> add to this? This is another um, one of those formalities. This is a pass-through grant that goes, it comes to us, and we simply pass it along to Rural Transit. So I'm just um, requesting the appropriation so we can go ahead and provide that funding to Rural Transit. Okay. Any comments, questions from counselors? Seeing none, let's go to comments from the public. If you have them, raise your hand on Teams or come forward in the net, you hill room. Seeing none, let's go to a roll call vote. Councillor McCam? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay, item C. Council, I move to approve the auditor's request and fund 4521 000 2021 redevelopment bond, the creation of account line 39945, disbursement to bank, and simultaneously approve an additional appropriation of $19.42 in the services category. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Auditor, anything to add to this? This is my final request today. So um, <laughs> last one, but we had a very small balance remaining in one of the um, outside accounts tied to this redevelopment bond. So we're just gonna utilize that for the only purpose which we may, which is to pay the debt. So I'm just asking for that to be appropriated so we can move forward. Okay. Any comments, questions from counselors? Just, just that, that I would like a calculation of how many minutes earlier we'll be able to pay off the <laughs> the balance with this uh, prepayment. I'll get right on that. <laughs> it's the stuff of legends right there. All right, any other comments? All right, seeing none, let's go to public comment. If you have them, raise your hand on Teams or come forward in the Nat U Hill. Seeing none, let's go to a roll call vote. Councilor Decker? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. All right, item 14 is a council office request. Council, I move to approve ordinance 2024-31, readopting procedures for awarding Sophia Travis community service grants. Second. In a second, let's go to uh, Michelle or even Councillor Munson, whoever wants to tell us what we're doing here. Um, oh, is this simply do, redoing she, what we've we always have? Done? We have recommendation from the Sophia Travis Grants Committee of uh, minor changes in the ordinance. And uh, this is something that we reviewed just to keep it uh, technically correct. And that's what this is all about. Do we need any more information than that? No, I think it was just clarification with regards to like 501Cs and um, collaborative, um, if it, uh, um, applicants, right. if they were doing a collaborative project. So, so so new this year will be uh, collaborative projects as a possibility for uh, applicants to work together and, and bring forth a, a team project. Councilor Iverson. It, what really excites me about this, and I thought we had a really productive session for Sophia Travis Grants, is this opens the door to charitable organizations who are not 501c3 organizations to participate. So you think about all those organizations out there that are not necessarily uh, uh, registered uh, as a 501c3 but still doing good work, this provides an avenue for them to partner with, with one of those organizations. Good stuff from the Sophia Travis Grant Committee. Awesome. Any other comments, questions? Thanks, Councillor Munson, for the continued leadership. It's one of the easiest committees to serve on in 
local public <laughs> service. And there's a reason for that. And it's got two names, Cheryl Munson. We appreciate that. All right, let's go to comments from the public. If you have any, come forward in the Now You Hill or raise your hand on Teams. All right, seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. Item B is an update from Michelle on quarterly levy fund summary for the second quarter. Sorry, that's the wrong one. You're fine. You're doing great. Hey, just that in the packet. I remember seeing that online, but what's, what's that? The, the, it's at the end of the packet. I looked Sorry. at it at home, but I thought I went to Dropbox or something. If you need a second, I can buy you some time if you'd like. C counselors, one item I just want to say, and, uh, Councilor Iverson's back in the room, so I've, I've got, for all of you that are here, we're minus two today. Um, one uh, item um, that continues is our ongoing work uh, as one entity involved in the jail discussion uh, and the move towards a new correctional facility. and. One of the things that uh, I've asked you all via email to take a look at is some available dates for a work session to discuss funding options. And so mm -hmm. if you have not responded yet, please do so. But one of the dates that um, I'm centering on based on some early availability that I'm kind of picking up is August the 8th at 6 p.m. And if you can look at your schedules on that, I would love to know if, if we might be able to schedule a work session. If we could not on that day, we might look at August 16th, where the long-term finance committee is doing its 10 a.m. Friday morning session, and we might look at that. And the goal of this work session would be to take the information we've received from FSG, the further information we've looked at, the auditors given us some estimates on cost to taxpayer. Uh, Ms. Turn King uh, continues to look at our options and to begin to look at a way that we will fund um, the future effort that, that needs to happen very quickly. I've heard that urgency over and over. This needs to happen very quickly. There's a lot of different parts doing that. Our, our part is funding that effort in the way we can. So please look at your calendars. Um, for those in, 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 making note of this, again, we're looking around the 8th or the 16th. The 8th around 6 p.m., the 16th probably 10 a.m. here in the Nat U Hill. Um, we'll follow up also with the two members that are not with us this evening. Councilor Hawk. Yes, does that uh, give enough time then for all the notices that we have to put in place? And on the um, off chance that the county council will determine to move forward with increasing the correctional tax. I mean, because we have to do that before the end of August, if, uh, depending on when we want it to be. Yeah. Right. My, my understanding is that our action would not need to take place until um, uh, one date is October 1st. And depending on, de what de depending on what we do. And so my intention, and the counselors can always overrule me, is that this work session would help us to plot a course that we would then in a follow-up meeting 
duly noted to the public take potential action if that's the path we go. Councilor McKenna? Just that I would very strongly encourage us not to try to make a final decision on that date. Yeah. The purpose is no. right. I, I think that the op, this is going to be an opportunity for us really to pull all that information together and and come up with a strategy. But yeah, we would need to have a separate date where we would actually consider any of the recent tax. Just not at that. Councilor Munson. Yes, I would like to uh, hear the pros and cons of um, the effective date for having the financing, there's options of October um, 1, 24, January 1, 25, October 1, 25. And uh, that certainly has to do with uh, Mr. Cockrell and our, uh, our consultant. Let me make sure that that has been captured here. I, I could barely hear her. This this is our our sound struggling. Councillor Munson, if you can oh, repeat say that, that again. Yeah, just one Sorry. more time. <laughs> so what? Uh, per per Molly Turner King's memo, she lays out uh, adoption dates for various uh, uh, financial decisions and also uh, the effective date for the financial distributions. And I think it would be helpful for us to know um, the advantages uh, or disadvantages of particular decision dates. Uh, this has to do with uh, land purchases, I'm sure, as well as um, developing the project and contracting for the construction. So we just need to be we, we just need more information. Mr. Cockrell, do you think you could relay that into the process um, for that to, to Ms. Turner King so that when we get to that point uh, in the meeting, perhaps we can yeah, talk and about she, it? She's off this week. I'll, yeah. I'll talk to Kim. I, I think I know what you're saying, but I, yeah. I, I'll talk to Kim, make sure I look at the memo and make sure I yeah, fully understand you didn't it. See the memo. If it's what I think it is, I don't think it's going to be that difficult of a response so i think okay. we'll be able to take care of okay. that no problem yeah. yeah i mean it may be that actually that uh greg garrett's might be the better one to answer answer that he, question he anyway it's well. really a fiscal question more yeah, than it yeah. is. a legal question and that and any determination like that that needs to be made let's make it do that and and try to help that process i think i saw Councillor iverson and then i'll go to hawk after that i, I really am supportive of uh having an additional meeting uh, and I would urge that uh, when this is scheduled that we, uh, of course, make it open to the public because the public has many questions. Uh, we have the luxury of uh, working with numbers all the time and we have a certain level of um, familiarity with them that, uh, you know, there's just, I think the public would really benefit from being able to ask questions as well. Well, we can take public comment, compile those questions and get responses back. Yeah. Councilor Hawk. Right. Um, we always know that uh, uh, when the public comes to talk with us, uh, we welcome uh, their assistance just so that we know we're making the best decision we can for the public. But what I wanted to say was remember, uh, too, that when you go back two years to see how the supplemental is distributed. Remember, that one made a huge difference this year, huge. You have to go back two years, and not only does the, the um, rate have to be in place, but also there has to have been an uh, appropriations made, you know, actual spending in place uh, for us to receive that portion of the distribution of the supplemental. It made a big difference because if you remember when I first talked with you, Mr. Cockrell, about that huge dollar amount, millions, and then it was like, oh, but it's not going to go into the economic development. And at the time you said, well, now that doesn't sound right. And it didn't sound right. But when you go back and look at the legislation, it does. So uh, we wanna make sure that whatever we do, we're not 
giving up any part of a large amount of supplemental that's going in there just and not get it back in where we see what I'm saying? I, it's confusing, isn't there, it? There's a lot of considerations. But the, the overarching one I hear is what are potential paths forward and what do those dates potentially look like? How does that affect uh, us and taxpayers? Taxpayers. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes, uh, and I know you don't lose track of this, uh, but it is just too easy to begin to look at just the numbers and not recognize the people who are paying that and it's income tax and that's tough, so. Well noted. Other comments, questions about that? So again, look at calendars around the 8th and the 16th, 8th at 6 p.m., 16th at, uh, we would hold that 10 a.m. time that long-term finance is, but if we could on the 8th, that would not be the worst thing. The 16th kind of would be a backup date to keep us moving. And if you could send me a text or an email, that way I can, you know, yeah. see which meeting works best for the majority. Michelle and Courtney are kind of tallying all that up. All right. I think that I bought you some time here. Do you want to jump back into Levy's fund summaries? <laughs> So um, council requested that we try to give you at least a like a quarterly update on where the levy funds are um, with regards to um, appropriations expenditures and cash balance and this this report um, I sent to you it was in the packet um, this one is just the levy funds and then we also included uh, the few that you talk about, you know, you know, are concerned with. So anything in pink is considered the levy, the levy funds, and then anything in the the white um, are funds mm -hmm. that you have talked about, have you know made requests about. So um, this was just an overall. It shows you uh, where you're at with regards to um, the certified budget, what was appropriated and approved on uh, Jan for January 1 and then your cash balance. Um, Councilor Munson asked, I had her look at this uh, prior to sending it out and she wanted a column of percentage remaining of the unexpended. So that's also in there in the blue. So that shows you, and this is as of June 30th, where these Good. budgets Good. are with regards to what is left remaining for the appropriations or unexpended appropriations and that's for like I said the levy funds okay. yeah. good yeah Councilor Iverson uh, for Cambridge and the percentage column mm -hmm. that's not a typo is it but, but it's I'll have to go and look um, what <laughs> happened was that might be accurate, and that's because they have been moving cash as and stuff into the, some of their grant funds. Oh, sure. So yeah. you know, so they're they're using that to supply some of their bridge projects and that kind of thing. So, so that kind of and they you know move that around. So that that might be accurate, <laughs> but I'll go back and double check. Councilor McKim. So one thing that we did talk about, uh, this, this just reminds, seeing these numbers just reminds me, we did talk about in long-term finance was the idea of uh, bringing up the rainy day balance to closer to $10 million. So um, and I think, you know, we probably are in a position, particularly with that supplemental that Councilor Hawk was talking about earlier, we're probably in a position. I mean, do you, do you agree? Uh, I do. I was um, actually planning on coming to you with a formal recommendation, perhaps at the next meeting. So um, we also heard from FSG, um, they recommended that we also fund um, the self-insurance fund a little bit um, better. So we get to that $2 million operating balance. So I'm going to look at both of those and um, move forward with the recommendation. Thank you. Yes. 
And also, I want to mention that um, FSG recommended that we have a, an ordinance um, resolution with regards to target balances. And we have, uh, Bree and I, along with Molly, have been working with uh, Greg Gertaz. And so uh, she will be bringing something to you at the next meeting with numbers that we feel like are good target balances as we That's go great. through this budgeting process. Right. Yeah, so it was, um, we had an opportunity to sit down and kind of understand the point of view um, of FSG and we came to a general understanding. So I think we're all in agreement at this point. Councilor Hogg. Uh, yes, I think I saw today, might have been yesterday, uh, FSG has recommended that we uh, budget in the rainy day fund uh, three a uh, million dollars in three different areas uh, for emergency. Um, did did you see that? Do you know what I'm speaking of? So it would be three million dollars that we would appropriate every year. It doesn't mean we'd be adding that on to it. It's just we would make sure it was there so that if there was an emergency such even worse perhaps than what we've seen this go around that there is a way and a place for them to go to immediately and not have not have to delay to get that cert. so that was fsg's uh, recommendation yes he uh he had mentioned that at one of our ltf meetings and then when we were going through this um review of the target he said it it should be uh, budgeted annually and go through the budget process to annually put in rainy day and have a target amount in each um, so line of supplies, services, and capital. And this way, if something does happen, you um, yeah. everyone has those uh, funds available immediately. So, and the, and it's only in extreme disaster emergencies you would want to uh, dip into those. So. And that's somehow, somehow or the other, we'd have to cover that because before long, and people forget, and it's like, oh, there's a million dollars we could take from here or there. And then we, that, so we've got to make sure we make it very clear it's an extreme disaster emergency. Well, and in fact, I think one really of those mean. other recommendations was to up and we need, we know we need to, is to have the commissioners, ask the commissioners to update the, um, the part of the code that deals with uh, the rainy day fund because it is it's obsolete it refers to coet and oh, it just dear. refers to some molly is working on that we've been okay. going okay. through that language so that's something she's not ready for it at the next meeting but it is it's on the radar to come and it reflects the, yes. the philosophy that the rainy day is the funding source of last resort Correct. rather than you know we've used it as a supplement for grants in the past and i know right. that's his not recommendation not to do that Yes, that is on her radar. So, I think the other person. So, I have a question about uh, the self insurance that's been recommended to us. Do you have more information to relay to us? Um, it depends on your question. I need to do a little bit more research. I wanted to. Um, I know that we can do a transfer. I just want to confirm that we can do a transfer to the self-insurance okay. fund because we haven't done one under, under my administration. Okay. So um, I'm going to just take that extra step, do that review, and then I'll come to you with more info. Okay, so I'm just interested in here. knowing the pros and cons of, of uh, uh, funding this. Thanks. Okay. All right, anything else? Yes, uh, Auditor. Just um, to kind of piggyback off Councillor McKim's comment about rainy day being a last resort, because we do have such a healthy general fund, I'm wondering if it makes more sense to have emergency lines set up in the general fund in those three categories rather than rainy day. I mean, at this currently, I mean, we're going to revisit this annually. It's just a thought. So when we're not as healthy, hopefully that doesn't happen, but in the future, if that would occur, we could simply make that appropriation in the rainy day fund. As, as long as it weren't, it wasn't in an area where whoever, whomever the department head is could transfer to other. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's other dangerous. <laughs> that's a well, dangerous situation. We it's could put council. that in the council budget, for example. So. True. Good, yes. All right, anything else on this? 
on this, on this one, um, I do have a, one other report that I would like to share. Sure. And Um, and this is just a quick little report um, that I wanted to give you um, with regards to additional appropriations and deappropriations. So, um, and this includes the funds that you just saw, levy funds and the ones that we've always done. So in the first quarter, here's the certified budget, you know, that kind of thing. And the additional appropriations of first quarter, then the total budget and then the ending cash balance. So you can, this is just a quick snapshot of appropriations that we have done so far this year mm. and how it has increased the budget. So here's the percentage rates that shows you the increase of the budgets. And mm. the, this one here in the general fund is because we removed the 1.5 million from rainy day mm -hmm. for highway and we created a 1.5 million in highway general. So uh, that's why there's such that. But I just wanted you to see kind of the, where we're at with regards to additional appropriations in like levy funds and your other funds, because when you uh, get all of these requests coming in, they're coming from grants. So the bulk that you are seeing almost every meeting is from grants and you can, you know, overall see, you know, how we're not uh, adding a really a whole lot additional appropriation wise to our overall budgets. Which is okay. a wonderful thing. Which yeah. is good. Grants means good. Yep. Friends watching at grants home. Are, we want grants. Yes. We want grants. grants not so grants good. being cut. So, and I hope this is helpful, you know, kind of thing. And if you, you know, need anything else or would like to see other, other, you know, funds or something that you've got concerns about, you just need to let me know. And this is one of the clearest things I think I've ever looked at in this job. And I, I really appreciate <laughs> that. And I'm hopeful that that kind of clarity goes into, goes into the next budget process, our uh, correctional facility discussions yeah. and funding, um, and it'll keep us on good pace. Any other comments or questions? These are so helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And to kind of add to that just for a second, the work that Ms. Shell's doing, the work with the auditor and the support from our legal team is keeping this going and that kind of professionalism helps us do our job so much. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to council comments. Anyone have a comment? We still have plenty of time to go catch uh, it's in the Starlight Drive-In tonight. Down to you know, I bought south, everybody a ticket. It's in Downtown Hawks District. I wanted to go see Twisters. Oh, but it geez. doesn't start till like 9.45 at night. Yeah, plenty of time for dinner. dinner. I feel like I can't I'll do Catch it. my movie for a couple hours. I want to say we did I'm a family trip, to. and we went to the drive-in to see Twisters. Did you? And I enjoyed it. So, so, yeah. so Pat and I watched Twister, yeah. which we had seen years ago, <laughs> just because we couldn't, we couldn't stay up that late. <laughs> you know what? I don't know how long it's been since you've been out to see Flatwoods Park, but my daughter and I, we went all over the county. I wanted her to see what the county's been doing and, and improving upon. And it was a wonderful day. Uh, at Flatwoods Park, there were so many people there. It was a... Just wait till they get the restrooms it was that, oh, I, know, I know, but <laughs> Teresa was really delighted they had one that was working. But maybe, <laughs> I mean, maybe not. As a, 
But there, there were so many children there. They were having some kind of a Sunday school, whatever, mm -hmm. party. But she was really, really delighted. And then we went out to Cars Farm Park and looked at, and, and the splash pad is working, you know? It, that so many times it's like down, it was working. Then we went to the airport. I'm telling you, we went everywhere. We went Starnes Road, we went Howard Road. <laughs> So a I, this is a beautiful, well, you know, if you live in Miami, Florida, and you drive through the beautiful countryside of Monroe County, you, it, she's just blown away by it. Even though she grew up here, it's wonderful to see it again. We have a good so, home and we're making it even better. Any other council comments, questions? With that note, we will go ahead and adjourn. Thank you.